Okay, so for this video, we are going to talk about required practical one, which is our enzyme practical. So with this practical, you basically need to investigate how a factor affects the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. Now, the factor that you're probably going to investigate is temperature or pH. You could also investigate like substrate concentration or enzyme concentration, or perhaps even the addition of an enzyme inhibitor. But the most common practical here, and maybe you've done this in school or college, is the effect of temperature on an enzyme controlled reaction. And that's what we're going to look at today. And this is a great opportunity for us to just talk about practical skills. So we're going to go through and recap what is an independent variable, what is a dependent variable, what is the purpose of controlled variables, etc. So the practical that we're going to use to do this, we're going to look at milk. So casein is a protein found in milk and trypsin is a protease enzyme. So it's a protein, sorry, an enzyme that digests the casein in the milk. And it's a really nice practical to do because when you add the trypsin enzyme to the solution of milk powder, it digests the casein, which is the protein, and the solution goes clear. So what we can do is record the time taken for the solution to go clear because that tells us that all the protein in the milk has been digested or hydrolyzed by the enzyme. So you can see it happening. So it's a really easy one to do. So we've got a list of equipment here. So obviously we've got our enzyme solution or our 0.5% trypsin solution. We've got our milk powder, which is a 3% concentration. We're using a pH buffer. Now buffers obviously control and maintain the pH. We've got a beaker, which we can use as a water bath. Now we're probably gonna need like multiple beakers, multiple water baths. We've got test tubes and a test tube rack. We've got a stopwatch for timing. And then we need all the standard stuff. So marker pens, pipettes or syringes to measure out particular volumes and a thermometer. So let's plan this investigation together. So the first thing we're going to think about is our independent variable. Now the independent variable you'll remember from GCSE is the one you change because that's the one you're investigating, right? This is the one that you want to see in this case, how it affects the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. So for us, our independent variable is temperature. That's the one we're going to change to see how it affects the rate. Now, in any investigation, we should be using at least five different values for our independent variable. OK, you can use more if you've got time, but we need at least five values so we can actually see if there's a trend. We've got enough data to plot a graph. So you could suggest five temperatures. For example, you could do it at 10 degrees Celsius, you could do it at 20, 30, 40 and 50. You could do more than that. You could do it at 60 as well if you wanted to. But you need at least five values for your independent variable. Now, we also need to think about how are we going to change this temperature? Well, obviously, we're going to use water baths because it tells us that in the equipment list. So we're going to use water baths. We're going to set those water baths to five different temperatures and we can even check the temperature with the thermometer. OK, so you're controlling it using the water bath, but you're monitoring it using your thermometer to make sure that each water bath is staying at the correct temperature and not fluctuating because that could obviously affect your results. So that's our independent. Let's move on to dependent. Now your dependent variable, you might remember, it kind of depends on the independent variable. Um, but the easiest way to think of it, it's the one you measure, or I like to think of it as the one you record in your table. So when you're actually doing your practical, you're getting your data, you're recording that data in your table, that's going to be your dependent variable. Now, in this case, it's going to be the time taken for the solution, the milk solution, to go clear. And we've got to be specific with that. Don't just say time taken, because if I was doing this practical, I would then say to you, time taken for what? <laughs> so try to say time taken in this case, 
for the solution to go clear. That's what we're actually measuring. And obviously, once we've got that data, we would then be able to calculate a rate of reaction, which we'll talk about later. Um, OK, now you're going to do this using a stop clock, obviously, or a stopwatch. So it's always good practice to not only state what the variable is, but say how you're actually going to measure it. So we're going to use a stopwatch for this one. Then we come on to our controlled variables. Now, control variables are obviously the ones we keep the same. We have to control them. We have to keep them the same. Now, you may have said in the past, oh, we keep them the same. So it's a fair test. That's pretty rubbish. OK, it's not going to get you any marks on an A-level paper. So what we need to start saying is they're the ones that we keep the same because if we don't control them, if we don't, let's see if I can write, if we don't control them, they could or would affect our dependent variable. And in an exam question, you would always give the dependent variable. So, for example, for this prac, we're going to say, look, if we don't control them, they are going to affect the time taken for the solution to go clear. And that means your results would not be valid because if you're changing lots of other things, how do you know it's the temperature causing those results and not something else? Like if you're not keeping the pH the same, it could be the pH that is affecting the time taken for the solution to go clear. So yeah, we have to keep them the same. We have to control them so they don't affect the time taken for the solution to go clear. And we could think about all the different variables we would have to control. So for example, if we go back to our equipment list, the concentration of enzyme solution or trypsin solution, the volume of enzyme solution or trypsin solution. We've also got there the concentration of milk solution and the volume of milk solution we'd have to think about as well. And also the pH, the pH, you know, this is an enzyme practical. We knew from GCSE that pH affects the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. So it's really important that we control it and we can see in our equipment list, we are using a buffer solution to control the pH, which is excellent practice. Obviously we've got set concentrations of solutions given to us. So that's already been controlled and we're gonna control the volume by obviously measuring the same volume each time using that pipette or using that syringe. So super important are control variables. All of these things, if we did not control them, would affect the time taken for the solution to go clear. Because if we have more enzyme, we've got more active sites. If we've got more substrate, we can make more enzyme substrate complexes. And if we change the pH, that's going to affect the tertiary structure of the enzyme and the shape of the active sites. Now, this is really good practice, isn't it? With any practical, you think about your IV, your DV, your CVs, and then you think about IV, how are we going to change it? DV, how are we going to measure it? And control variables, how are we going to control them? Okay, a couple of other things that I think we should just mention with this practical. Um, when you do this prac, if you've not done it yet, what you'll notice is that you put the enzyme and buffer in one tube so one test tube or boiling tube whatever you've got and you'll put your milk solution in a second tube and you'll take those tubes once you've carefully measured the volumes of those solutions and you'll put them in your water bath for you know at least five minutes maybe even 10 minutes before you mix them. Now, why is that? We don't want to just take our enzyme, our buffer, and straight away add it to the milk solution, you know, as soon as we put it in the water bath. Because if we do that, it's likely that the solutions will not have reached the temperature of the water bath. They will not have reached the temperature that we are trying to investigate. So we're going to put them separately 
into the water bath for five minutes at least. You're probably gonna check the temperature with the thermometer as well, just to check they've reached the temperature before you mix them together. So this is to make sure all solutions, so the enzyme, the buffer, and the milk solution have reached the correct temperature. So that's something to think about to make sure that we get valid results, yeah? Because we do need the temperature to be correct for each of these investigations. And the other thing that I think it is just worth mentioning, mentioning with any practical, literally any practical in science, please think about repeats. You are not just gonna do this investigation once at each temperature. You're gonna do it three times at each temperature. You can do it more, the more the better, the bigger the sample size or the more repeats, it's always better. But we need to do at least three repeats at each temperature. Now why? We can say things like it allows us to identify anomalies. So if something's gone wrong with one investigation and the result is a little bit odd, it doesn't look the same as the other results, we're going to call that an anomaly, right? An odd result that doesn't fit the pattern. So if we've got three repeats, anomalies are going to become more obvious. We're going to be able to identify those anomalies. Then what we can do is discard the anomalies. So we basically do not include them in our calculation of the mean. Discard the anomalies. I mean, it would be even better practice if you have got an anomaly and you're going to have to discard that result repeat it again so that you've always got three good results for each temperature but we can discard the anomalies and not include them in the mean calculation and this is going to give us a more reliable mean yeah a more reliable mean because we've got our three repeats we are discarding any anomalies that we've identified. So our mean is going to be much more reliable. Now, a bit of an issue, I think, with this prac is we are looking for the milk to go clear. And something else we could think about is this is a subjective measurement, okay? I might be looking at the milk and saying, yeah, it's gone clear. I'm going to hit that stopwatch. But someone else might be looking at the milk and thinking, I don't think it's gone clear. I think it still looks a little bit cloudy. So it's not the best. It is subjective. That's what we say in biology. It is based on our opinion of what is clear and what is still a bit cloudy. But this is an investigation that we do a lot as required practical one. You might have done this exact investigation in school. So I hope you found this video useful. Obviously, make sure you're subscribed, make sure your notifications are switched on so that whenever I post something else that's going to help you with A-level biology, you're going to benefit from it and hopefully learn with me throughout the course of your A-level.